number of dead in the twin attacks in Norway rises to 92. <laughs> Nearly all were killed when a gunman ran amok on an island summer camp. Police are still searching for more victims. He started shooting at every single person. They were crying, they were screaming. Uh, people were falling over me, and, uh, and by playing dead, I believe I saved my own life. A 32-year-old Norwegian man is charged. He's believed to have links to extreme right-wing groups. Norway's prime minister says the attacks are beyond comprehension, but urges the country not to cave into fear. And remanded in custody, the nurse charged over the deaths of five hospital patients. Good afternoon. Norway's Prime Minister says his country's way of life has been abused and attacked and the violence is beyond comprehension. More than 90 people are now known to have died yesterday, seven in a car bomb in central Oslo, but the vast majority were shot indiscriminately at a summer camp for young people on the island of Utøya. John Sopel joins us now from Oslo. John. Matthew, thank you very much. Yes, flags are flying at half-mast. Uh, people are wandering around the city somewhat bewildered by what has unfolded. There's broken glass on the streets. But none of this captures the magnitude of the scale of the shock felt by the Norwegian people. Our first report is from Richard Galpin, and I should say that some of the images in it are very disturbing. Gradually, the survivors are brought back from the island. Traumatised and probably scarred for life, they are the lucky ones. They're still alive. This is the beautiful island retreat, Utaira, which every year hosts a summer camp for hundreds of teenagers from around the country. Earlier, it seemed so perfect. The young members of the governing Labour Party gathered for days of political discussion and fun. But suddenly, yesterday afternoon, they were fleeing for their lives, hiding in the woods and buildings, as a man dressed as a police officer went on a shooting spree. Some tried to swim away, but the cold water and distance forced most back to face the gunman with his automatic rifle once more. Many people died and I just had to shield myself behind them and pray he wouldn't see me and that's when uh, he, he shot. I could feel his breath, I could feel his boots, I could feel the warmth from the, the barrel, but I didn't move and that's what saved my life. Other survivors arriving back from the island described how they'd been deceived by the gunman's police uniform. People were jumping out of windows and running everywhere in all directions, terrified for their life. Most people ran towards the water, hiding behind stones and small hills. The guy was dressed as a policeman and he was trying to ensure that he was kind of helping us and he said, come here. He had a rifle or sniper which he was using to shoot at us. It was total chaos. For most caught up in the violence, it felt an eternity before police special forces finally came to the rescue. That was partly because so many police were still dealing with this. The aftermath of the huge car bomb detonated in front of the main government buildings in central Oslo. Detonating mid-afternoon yesterday, it killed and maimed in the heart of a capital known for its tranquility. This is the man Norwegian media say has now been charged in connection with both attacks. A 32-year-old called Anders Bering Breivik, who's alleged to hold extreme nationalist and Christian views. It's not clear if he was acting alone. Today, the Prime Minister came here to the area near the island where the survivors have been taken to reassure, comfort and deliver a strong message. 
you must take control of Utøya and show that young people can be engaged, that young people are interested in society, in debating politics, and that those who try to scare us shall not win. But still, the grief and shock continue, heightened by the news that many young people are still missing. So people here in this community, as in the rest of the country, are still waiting to find out exactly how many people were killed in the shooting incident. They also want to know why would a gunman open fire on young people enjoying a summer camp in a beautiful location like this. Richard Galpin, BBC News, near Utara Island. Well, as we heard there in Richard's report, the killings were carried out by a lone 32-year-old Norwegian gunman, Anders Bering Breivik. So who is he? And what drove him to commit such carnage? Here's our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. Coming to terms with Norway's tragedy. Now the hard questions. How could such a tranquil society as this produce such willful carnage? The suspect in custody has been named by Norwegian media as Anders Bering Breivik, 32 years old, born and grew up in Norway. He's been charged with acts of terrorism. He's not known by the police before, uh, so we have not uh, arrested him before or anything like that. Uh, on his website, as you probably have seen, he, he tells himself to be a Christian and going to the right. Police search the suspect's apartment within hours of the shooting, hunting for clues. They're starting to build up a picture of a man with deeply intolerant views towards immigration and what he saw as his government's lax policies. His social networking page on Facebook, only recently set up, names his interests as bodybuilding and Freemasonry. His account on Twitter posts a quote from the philosopher John Stuart Mill, saying, one person with a belief is equal to the force of a hundred thousand who have only interests. Police also searched the farm he set up outside Oslo to grow fruit and vegetables. It's alleged he bought six tons of fertilizer, a possible explosive ingredient, before yesterday's bombing in Oslo. In the shattered center of the Norwegian capital, the army has been deployed. Britain, amongst other nations, has offered intelligence help. But now this appears to be a case of homegrown political extremism, it's more a case of what others can learn from Norway's tragic experience. We'll want to make sure that we learn, like others, any lessons there are to learn about how to be more secure against horrific outrages like this. And that's something we can discuss at the National Security Council on Monday. For Norway, there is now a burning question. Were these the acts of a lone fanatic or are there other right-wing extremists waiting to copy his bloody example? Frank Gardner, BBC News. Well, our correspondent Steve Rosenberg is uh, near Utøya now. And Steve, I know you've been out on a boat near the island. What did you see? 